So yesterday I was in a meeting and one of my employees called out to me that um, the Kansas comic Gail Sayers had passed away at the age of 77. He said, why don't you let me know before I got surprised when I went online and saw it. So I appreciated that heads up for sure. But as you can imagine, natural curiosity got the best of me. So as soon as that meeting was over, I, I logged on to Twitter to see what the scoop was, see what the story was, and see what would maybe had happened. So you can imagine my surprise, because I had not been online in terms of outside of work purposes for all of the day Wednesday in the morning. I hadn't touched it yet. I hadn't been online, hadn't seen anything yet. So you can imagine my utter shock and surprise when I saw what was certainly the other big news and devastating news of the day is that Joe Laronitis, better known to millions of wrestling fans around the world as Road Warrior Animal, passed away apparently late Tuesday night at the age of 60. And unfortunately as wrestling fans we are very used to dealing with death. We are very accustomed to it we almost kind of grow numb to it in a lot of ways. It just unfortunately comes with the territory. In the past 20 years, 25 years, so many great, so many legends, so many icons have been lost to us and often well before what feels like should have been their time. And, and certainly uh, Animal falls into that category. But I found myself yesterday like, there are certain ones that impact you more than others. There are certain ones that just hit differently. Like Macho Man's passing in 2011 hit differently. Certainly did. Warrior's passing a few years later, that hit differently. And, you know, some other really big name, notable legends, such as Roddy Piper and the American Dwayne Dusty Rhodes, baby. Like, those hit, they didn't hit quite the same. It just wasn't that same impact, you know, realistically compared to Mach and compared to Warrior. But in general, it all kind of fit into that larger thing of, you know, as I think about, you know, my own life and where I'm at in my life, I'm 39 now, I'm not getting any younger. I mean, you start to think about where you've been, what your life's been about, where you're going, how much time you have left. You start to think about your mortality a little bit more uh, than you might want to or might like to. I certainly know that holds true for me. But when I see so many of these names of the past that represented so many good things for me in my childhood and so many great and wonderful memories, like you feel like a piece of you is gone. You feel like your own mortality uh, draws more eminently closer by the day. But this Road Warrior one, losing animal, like that connects on a whole different level. Not only was he one half of what I still feel is arguably the greatest tag team in professional wrestling history, and certainly in North American wrestling history, uh, not only was it one half of my favorite tag team growing up and my favorite tag team of all time, but Road Warrior Animal, in a lot of ways, represents more than that than just me. And I know I could sit here and talk for hours about his accomplishments, his career, everything he did, starting off in Minnesota and starting off being trained by Eddie Sharkey and moving down to Georgia and really haven't seen their career take off in Georgia Championship Wrestling and then eventually in the Crockett Territory on the Jim Crockett Pumothons, if you will. Um, that's not what I really want to talk about like because I, I could do that and a lot of other people are going to certainly talk about that like the, the the road warrior animal death connects to me a little differently and impacts me a little differently it means a, a little bit more uh, because it, it represents other things just beyond his impact to me as a wrestling fan and when I think about wrestling even as a whole like so many good things that have happened to me in my life bad ones too but certainly a lot of good things that happened have come because of my association with professional wrestling and being a fan all of these three plus decades of professional wrestling. 
I've met a lot of great people. I get to interact with a lot of you. Sometimes it's fun and sometimes not so fun. But either way, I enjoy every minute of it. I've met people. I've met some dear friends, some friends that I will have for the rest of my life. And I owe that all to professional wrestling. And no matter what anybody can say or do to try and take that away from me, they never can. And I remember back on 2012, back at the time we were still doing the Off the Rope show, it was me, it was Tasteless Tony T, it was Mr. Rout, it was Metal D, it was Marvelous Mark, the whole crew, you'd either get sporadic appearances by B-Rad, remember those good old days? Those were glorious times. The product wasn't always good, but damn, being able to hang out with the dudes and be able to watch wrestling go over to the Green Meanie's house or come over to my apartment, wherever we ended up watching. Like, it was so much fun. So much fun. Like, that to me is more fun in that two-year stretch, 2011, 2012, the things we were doing on the channel at the time, you know, all the fun we were having as a group watching wrestling. That was more fun to me than even watching wrestling back in the Attitude Era. It's not even close. And the product in the Attitude Era was so significantly better. But for me... Like in a lot of ways, the, the peak for me as a wrestling fan and just some of the peak memories and peak enjoyment I got out of life in general came in that 2011 and 2012 time frame. And I think about 2012 and our involvement as a show with the uh, Dan Gable Museum there in Waterloo, Iowa and the George Tregos Luthes Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame Week that happens every July. If you've never been there, it's a bucket list item as a wrestling fan. You should probably do it at some point. If you've been to Cauliflower Alley Club or um, done anybody else's Hall of Fames, like those are great, those are wonderful, but you also need to go to the one in Iowa. You, you must. It's, it's a fantastic weekend. Um, and been able to attend years back a couple of times. Enjoyed it. Great, great experiences. Great, great memories. Seeing so many legends, being able to interact so well, close and personal with them. But 2012 struck entirely different. Like, we're there for the show. And, you know, one of the big deals was going to be that Road Warrior Animal was there. And it was somebody that we had actually suggested. Like, we had been pulled into a meeting shortly after the 2011 session. It was Tony and I that went to the meeting. And we're talking about some of the... Uh, nominees and potential award candidates and you know us thinking about raging marks that we are we're like well hell why don't you go with JBL for this award and Jim Ross for that award and then what about Road Warrior Animal and it happened and here comes JBL and here comes Jim Ross and most importantly of all here comes Road Warrior Animal like we were looking forward to that Hall of Fame weekend like you wouldn't believe and man what a truly special experience. Like, I've never been able to go experience a WrestleMania week like so many of you maybe have. And I imagine how great and wonderful that experience is. You get to be a part of Access. You get to go see all these shows. You get to see so many fellow wrestling fans, maybe meet some friends, hang out with some friends, meet some people you've never met that you've always interacted with online, maybe meet some of your favorite podcasters or YouTube hosts or whatever the case might be. See these wrestlers, meet these wrestlers. Like, got to be a tremendous experience. Well, for me, that 2012 experience was just that. I remember we're sitting there. It's Friday on that weekend, and Briscoe and JR were running some tryouts for wrestlers that were happening before the Impact Pro Wrestling show that Troy Peterson's group would put on for Friday night, which was one of the signature events uh, for the Hall of Fame weekend. And Tony, Mikey, and I are kind of standing there off in the distance a little bit, you know, kind of waiting, you know, it's still going to be another hour and a half or two before the show actually begins. And all of a sudden we see this dude walk in, in a blue St. Louis Ram shirt. And I go to Tony, like, Tony's, Tony's doing tasteless Tony T things, not really paying attention. I said, Tony, if my memory serves me correctly, and I hope it does, Tony, if I'm doing it any disservice, I think I'm getting most of it right, though. I'm like, Tony, is that who it is? I think it is. Tony's like, is that who I think it is? I said, that's fucking World Warrior Animal. Like, it's one of our favorite wrestlers of all time has just walked in the damn convention center there at Five Sullivan Brothers. He's just walked in, and it's like the Red Sea fucking parted. But nobody's there to greet him. Nobody's there to talk to him. And I'm like, fuck this. Boom, come on, Tony, let's go. 
And Tony, I think, was a little intimidated or a little bit scared. Maybe, maybe not. He just didn't want to be, you know, Tony's such a polite guy in person, realistically. Um, we call him the tasteless one, but, you know, very polite in person, very respectful. So he didn't want to just barge and intrude. And you know the Schleg Daddy, like, character, real life, don't fucking matter. As World Warrior Animal, boom! Ain't nobody talking to him. We's gonna be the first. And from that moment in time, the whole weekend just was one big, massive set of fun the entire time. We basically helped kind of chaperone Road Warrior Animal on the Friday night. We sat by him, you know, and interacted with him at the, the autograph tables and make sure that he was taken care of. Then we got to hang out with him after the Impact Pro Wrestling show on Friday night at the bar at the hotel that was right next to the convention center. And being able to sit there and interact with him and hear all these great stories and him talking about Hank Hawk and talking about the Road Warriors, talking about Paul Ellering and talking about, you know, beef with Vince and things they've done with Vince and things they've done all around the world. You know, at one point in time, being able to regale Road Warrior Animal with my rant on the Memphis mid-card piece of crap. Broke 10,000 guitars, never do a dime. And every time he brings somebody in like the Road Warriors that was more over than him, he didn't want anything to do with them anymore. And then to hear Road Warrior legitimately pop and mark out and reemphasize every damn thing I had ever said is a freaking highlight I will take with me to my grave. And then at that time, Marvelous Mark actually pointed this out on Twitter last night. Got to give him all the credit. I even forgot about this. As we're sitting there hanging out with Road Warrior Animal at the bar on a Friday night, gets a call from his brother. Hey, that's Johnny Ace. I think we need you to come in for the SmackDown taping this week. That's how we knew that Warrior was going to be Road Warrior Animal was going to be on SmackDown that week. We knew it. I think before anybody else did. Before any dirt sheets. Before anybody, we knew. Because we were there when the call happened. We can legitimately hear, hey, yeah, we're going to have you come in on Tuesday. This fantastic, man. And then Saturday morning, like Friday night even to top that all off. And this is the weekend in 2012 that Kurt Angle didn't show up. So that was, a, that was kind of a big deal, a big story. But <laughs> Friday night, JR hands me this big box of jerky. And asked me to take it home so that way it can bring it back to the venue on Saturday morning uh, when we have the autograph signing and the meet and greet and the Q&A uh, with the fans so that way he can hawk some of his jerky. So I take it home with me and certainly uh, Smokey and I kept very, very close watch over it that night. Believe me, I think even if you go back there are pictures of it. Um, but then we get to Saturday and Saturday morning and we get down to the museum early and we realize... We asked the museum, like, who's going to pick up Earl Warrior Animal from the hotel? Nobody's doing it. Boom! Got it! So Mr. Rout, Tony, and myself, we go driving down to the hotel. It's not far away, but it feels like forever, even though it was only a few minutes. Like, it's truly one of the highlights and joys of our entire freaking lives. We sit there, get to the hotel. Somebody's got to call him. Bam! Schleich Daddy calls him. Calls Road Warrior Animal in the hotel room to let them know that we're here to pick them up. It's time. And Road Warrior comes on down. So here we are at the hotel. Here comes Road Warrior Animal bebopping out of the hotel. You got myself, and I believe it was Tony now in the back seat. And you've got freaking Road Warrior Animal <laughs> sitting there. And what was it, Mr. Rowe? You have to keep me out. It's your Chevy Impala or Malibu, whatever the hell it was. You got Road Warrior Animal riding shotgun. It's just fantastic. Going to get him lunch that afternoon. Like, just so many wonderful memories. Like, sitting there and him asking me once we got to the museum, hey, do you think you can cop me one of the shirts? Hey, sorry, Kyle, at the museum. Guess what I did? I borrowed a couple of shirts and gave them to World Warrior Animal. Sue me. <laughs> what am I going to do? You guys were taking care of him, so we did. OTRS took care of World Warrior Animal that weekend. And I remember even after we got through... Everything that day was just, again, a fantastic day. And you get to the, the induction ceremony, the banquet at the end of Saturday night, and that's kind of like the end of the festivities. Like, Road Warrior Animal asks us if we're going to sit there and uh, join him at the bar. Like, that's cool, man. Like, it doesn't get much, much cooler than that. Like, even the stuff we had bought for the silent auction for a fundraiser for the museum, having more animals see, you know, the posters and some of the other memorabilia that we had bought, and then go through and sign it, like, I just look back at that whole weekend, man, like it just doesn't get much better than that.
Like it was truly one of the highlights of my life as a wrestling fan and just a highlight of my life in general, honestly. Like it, that's peak stuff. And I know it was peak stuff for the other guys in OTR Central as well. Like so many great memories that I still truly, truly, and I really mean this, truly cherish to this day. And I know a lot of this video has been focused on me, which for some of you doesn't surprise me based off of the perceived size of my ego, both real and imagined. But I hope it doesn't come across that way because what it's meant to represent is more insights into the man, Joel Laronitis, versus just Road Warrior Animal. And the fact that you had all of these guys that were huge Road Warriors fans, you know, Raging marks for him, for Hawk, for Paul, for the entire team. Just all of these guys, you know, being able to hang out with somebody that they had watched for so many years, they admired, they respected, they enjoyed what he did. Like to be able to get that opportunity is not just not something you get every day. And for World Warrior Animal to let us so close to him for that weekend and allow us to enjoy the weekend along with him. And for him to kind of bring us along on the ride, like, is truly a memory that I will take to the grave with me, that I will cherish forever. And I know everybody else associated with the show will as well. And, you know, there are a lot of things that you have. And some mean more to you than others. And, you know, memories, especially good memories, are things that we should cherish and hold on to as much as we possibly can. And I look at this picture here. It's a picture, if you see it, you've probably seen it. It's on, on Twitter. Um, here's a picture of Tony, myself, Mr. Rout, and Road Warrior Animal. It's a picture from that Friday night at the show. If you, I don't know if any of you remember from that far back. Uh, Tony had went through the efforts of getting something done where we could give away some... Uh, shoulder pads with the spikes like the road warriors and have animal autograph it. we raised several hundred dollars in a raffle for the museum like this picture here you know getting to hang with one of our heroes and being able to do that with some of my best friends of my entire life you know friends to the end even if i haven't always been the best friend you know this right here i hang up i display proudly when we were working in the office the one picture I had on my desk was this one. As much as I love the dogs and the cats and everything else, like this was that picture. This was that thing that I put there to represent, you know, all those wonderful memories and all those happy times and all that positivity. Like this is the one, as much as so many other things that I have, all the other sports memorabilia, all the other material items, this to me right here, because of the memories of the weekend, because of the environment, because of who it was with, because of everything, is one of my truly most cherished possessions. And I will always cherish and treasure it. And I know his son James and his wife are certainly reeling. Um, interest of full disclosure, I seem to remember, you know, when Joe was talking to us that weekend, he was talking about that he previously had been diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Uh, so not here to speculate. I do wonder um, if that's what ultimately uh, led to his passing. Um, but I want to, you know, certainly extend my thoughts to them, my sympathies to them. Uh, and hopefully they know just how much he impacted so many people's lives in a positive way. And I always wanted to express my eternal, grateful, grateful appreciation uh, to Road Warrior Animal for taking a bunch of wrestling fans that he didn't know from a hole in the ground and giving them one of the greatest weekends of their entire lives. Rest in peace, Animal. May you and Hawk be up there uh, dominating wherever it is, wherever that is, and running roughshod over all the other tag teams where it is because you're the greatest, the icons of icons when it comes to tag team wrestling. And they even thinking about it now, I'm describing like the feeling, the emotions I have right now. Even though it was an animal that said it, the only thing I got to say is, Ooh, I don't rush.